Yeah. So sometimes traffic is down. Yeah. And, you know, sometimes it's outside factors that don't, there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah, and honestly, April we last year, everybody's it. traffic dropped, yeah. right? Because there was a worldwide pandemic and yeah. you can't, you know, SEO responds to demand, doesn't create demand. Honestly, like the weather has been so nice and people are starting to go out again. So there is some attribution. Well, to and some of what you do relates to school. It's the end of the school year. Yeah. yeah. You know, mm-hmm. that could be. So what I would do to check things is go to trends. T-R-E-N-D-S, trends.google.com. And look for, actually, let's, let's practice this together. I actually wrote on the Reliable Acorn blog about how to do this, but let's, let's do a live example of this. This is a um, really good point. So, trends.google.com. So what this is, this is a really cool free tool from Google. If you've done the keyword research process, you might have experienced this because this is one of the ways you can collect data about what people are searching for. Um, It's a pretty tedious process to do it this way, but it works. So we're not guessing at what customers are looking for. We have some data to help us. But to interject for just a second would you say this is more reliable than answer the public or they're just two sides of the same coin it is very different than answer the public answer the public gives you ideas of words this Mm. gives you data behind the words interesting so okay let's do autism services okay Mm -hmm. so I'm typing and it's suggesting some things, a search term, how many people are searching for autism services, Mm -hmm. autism services as a topic. So this is just the fact here that we have two different things, a search phrase and a topic tells you something very important about Google. So a topic is much broader than a literal phrase. Right. It's it can encompass that for that literal phrase, but it can encompass a lot of things related to that literal phrase. Okay. So really, are we're not interested in how many people are searching for autism services as a keyword. We're really right. looking at okay. how many people look for this as a topic. Right? right. That's much more valuable because it includes the keyword right. and more. So right. this might be one way to do it. And we're just going to go with this one as a starting point. But our first step here is to figure out a topic. A, a topic, not just a word about which our customers might be searching. Right. Right. So for you, it could also be ABA, mm-hmm. but we got to be careful with ABA because ABA could mean something besides your specific kind of services. Yeah. Uh, I think say ABA is American Bar Association. Right. That so kind of, we want to make sure that that doesn't get confused. Yeah. You do ABA therapy. I thought yeah. behavioral analysis. Yeah. So tell topic. me, David, so you're saying to, to put that in and instead of search term, put topic. For, for this practice of finding demand, yes. For, for the keyword research process, I would do search term. But for this, so what this tells us is a couple things. This is interest over time for the last 12 months. Mm-hmm. A lot more people are looking for the topic of applied behavior analysis than the topic of autism services. Interesting. But you can see demand because this is interest. So last year, Mm -hmm. the last week of the year was the all time low in the last 12 months of demand for applied behavior analysis, Mm -hmm. right? So, but you've seen, it's been going down all year too, right? Yeah. We get all kinds of really wonderful information. So we could go, as we could say, because we oh, know wow, you happen so to be here. Mm-hmm. We can limit this data to interest in this topic for New Jersey. Huh. 
And so now we're getting some really interesting stuff here because you have a focus of an area. You might not be able to help someone in LA. Right. For your service, you, you offer certifications and things like that that someone in California could potentially work, but that's not what we're looking at here. And we can get a little bit more granular, same kind of thing. End of the year was the decline, up, down, up, down, up, down. But it, you'll notice last year, it was much, generally higher, much higher than this year, right? And this is just limited to New Jersey. Now, can you explain what the um, Y, X? I don't know what axis it is, the horizon, the vertical one. The is vertical that... is, is called interest. Okay. So that's a number between zero and 100 that shows how interested people are in a particular topic. What that means, who knows? Google it's doesn't sort of like tell us what that number means. Just, it doesn't correspond to okay. 100 visitors. It corresponds right. to- It's just like an arbitrary rate. They're, it's not arbitrary, they're, but, they're, but they're trying to baseline it so you can compare mm -hmm. different things. So for instance, we are seeing no zeros for mm -hmm. autism services all the way around, mm -hmm. right? But we could, if we picked another phrase, let's just say autism as a disorder, mm -hmm. might not, might not want, disorder might not be the right word we wanna use, but that's how Google characterizes it. So, we see, now we can compare autism as a disorder is significantly more people looking for it than ABA as a topic. Interesting. And services is next to zero. So this helps us compare phrases with each other, but it also kind of helps us look at, look at again, for some reason, mm -hmm. March, biggest spike we've seen in the last 12 months and that was the month with our best numbers mm, wow we get a lot and of then, numbers. see yeah. look how it's gone down too yep see yeah yep. i'll tell you so, my so, bonus is tied to these numbers so maybe i can argue for this. <laughs> yeah well, so, get, get so this this helps yeah. you reassure hey you know there are outside factors affecting mm -hmm. us that aren't necessarily like mm -hmm. we could speculate but we we could theoretically find out like what if there was a the new york times did a big research project on autism in end of march so everybody was talking about it mm -hmm. like oh that's mm -hmm. why everybody's really interested in it right now well they have enough influence where they or what if what if the national conference for your industry was in march what if 2020 or 60 minutes the big thing about mm -hmm. something that month, right? Yeah. There's and also things. what is um autism awareness month? Like that April. month I would think would be like, you know, autism uh, awareness is April, yeah. There, oh, there so, you go. Oh, so right there. So that that right there, because yeah. in that wasn't that April? Um yeah. What's because interesting April. is perspective, right? Because here I was kind of down, like, oh, our traffic stayed stagnant. But if I'm looking at the trend, it's actually good that we stayed steady as opposed to declining. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so that's really. I would definitely do since get that information right there and show. Look, you all did great. Give me a bonus. I just wrote <laughs> for Libel Acorn a way to compare your traffic against the demand for your topic and the demand for your brand in Google Trends. So here is data from a real client. This, the blue represents how much traffic they got, in this case from organic search, because that's the one that's most likely to be dependent upon demand, right? Mm -hmm versus demand for their their topic and in this case they they are big enough where they have a brand awareness and you can see that as brand goes up 
traffic tends to go up. So sometimes it's not my awesome SEO services. Sometimes it's the awesome work of the PR firm, you know, or they're in the news, right? Mm -hmm. So this, this little article explains how to come up with, here's another one. This is an interesting case. Boy, their traffic has been sucking all year. But this is a very seasonal company. Mm -hmm. And guess when their peak season is? And they did really well last pandemic because they do like stuff on the outdoors. Everybody's mm -hmm. like, I'm stuck at being home. I'm going to pay someone to make my outdoors. But boy, yeah. winter months sucking. Because mm -hmm. demand for their services. No one calls them to do outdoor patios. And they, we, you know. Here's another interesting one. This is a re another real client. A year ago, their traffic is almost twice where it was this last month. Demand for their services main constant, but what's different? People are less looking for their brand. Hmm. And so what this is, is a PR problem, whereas people are, are either, it could be market saturation where other companies have emerged in this industry and are now taking market share away from this company, which is probably what's going on. But I thought, oh no, I'm a terrible SEO. And then I look at demand for their brand. Yeah, no, it's, it's a PR problem. Now, could you then, instead of using it as topic, use it for search term, if you're comparing phrases that you want to put in your website for SEO? Yes, and, and there is in the process In the keyword research overview, mm -hmm. going deep now, you can use Google Trends to click to gather data about your search terms. Okay. And so here's a, the, the process showing you how to do this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Because you really uh, answer the public, or I like keyword.io. They're great tools to come up with ideas. But unless you know how many people search for more or less, you're just kind of inferring you think people might be looking for mm -hmm. that. Sometimes yeah, so you don't need the numbers. But, but, but using a tool right. like this will help you compare. Yeah, we'll place value on it. Because what right. I did initially is I didn't answer the public search, like, for example, for parenting. And then, you know, I mean, we got like 300 results. So what I did was download that as a CSV and then essentially highlight those that are highly relevant, delete those that are highly unrelevant and like leave the ones that are kind of there in the middle. That way I can compare the ones that are most relevant now with this tool to compare and see, okay, these are most relevant to us. Is there a demand for it? And if so, which terms are the, is the highest demand for? Um, but this is just like crazy to, I mean, obviously I didn't get this far in the keyword search previously that I did a lot of the brainstorming and, and that and looked at it. And because really we don't, it's interesting because prior to this month, we didn't consider ourselves to have a traffic problem because arguably we get too many people requesting our services. We can't fulfill it all. But now that we're shifting into a different service line, in addition, it changes perspective and it changes what a customer looks like. And so now we have to really re-examine what we're doing and try to recreate the success of our ABA services now with the different service line. Without losing um, what you worked with. Without doing. losing what we already worked with. And, and particularly, you know, for myself, I, I don't have a web developer background. You know, I came into this company when it was already on a growth spurt. And so to help to kind of identify what steps were taken before I started and recreate them and work and also improve, you know, it's, um, it's a little bit daunting. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. 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 I'm going to 
share this link with the chat so yes, everyone please. can look at that. But I recommend going in here, following the keyword research process with the new line and taking here. the time to work through the whole process right. yeah. to collect data so you're making an educated decision about these things yeah. rather than saying, well, I think this is what people are looking for. Like this will tell you whether people are looking for parent coaching. Mm. Like Bupkis. Well, now that's limited in New Jersey. Mm -hmm. But you can use stuff like here's related queries autism in girls. Is autism genetic? What causes autism? This is rising. So these are topics that are more popular recently. You can look at the top topics signs of autism. This is, again, we're limited to New Jersey, so we could uh, remove that and just go United States. Well, I mean, I mean, we've talked about this before. When we're focusing on customers, it's new, or as far as like families go, we do focus on New Jersey. It's when we do our marketing professional um, things that we can like sell webinars and things, then we do, you know, uh, nationwide. Well, in, in the keyword research process, because the data in, uh, will explain that in, uh, because the data in Google Trends can be limited, if you limit yourself by a geography, you mm -hmm. might get zeros. Right. But, and, and that doesn't mean no one's searching for it, it just means there's not enough data when you narrow down to a geography. Area, so you yeah. might do search for United States, knowing that you really are focusing in New Jersey, but if you can find ideas in the United States, it, People are in New Jersey are probably going to be asking them to. Right. Right. So use the use a, you know, you can zero in on a particular location, but but you don't have to. And sometimes you don't want to, or you're gonna everything will look like no one's searching for it. In reality is because you're looking too granularly. Mm -hmm. Right. So so this is the first thing I check when it comes to traffic down. Is there something going on outside that could be affecting it. And it looks like there might be for you. Yeah. And, and if that's the case, then um, it might not have anything to do with you. Now, mm -hmm. over the last month or so, Apple has been making some transitions to prevent cookies and things like that to make it a lot harder to track and attribute mm -hmm. traffic. So it could be something like that. What I would look at is, is your direct traffic up? And is that making up for traffic that's down in other spots? Because Google Analytics will report direct traffic when it doesn't know the source of the traffic. Um, no, because that's the all visitors, correct? As f compared to new visitors? No, not necessarily. So direct traffic is a different traffic channel, like organic is a channel, referral right. is a channel. Yeah. Our, social um, is a channel. Typically, I want to say that our new organic search is 70%. Um, direct is like 20 and then like social and other is like five to 10. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes maybe like 60, 30 instead of 70, 20. Yeah. Um, but that is pretty steady. But our overall traffic, in addition to our new users, has gone down a little bit um, in the past couple months. Like we're averaging in the 200s each week as opposed to like at the height of, our traffic in April, we were hitting close to 400 every week. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we kept, this... yeah. I mean, in, in March we were, we hit, I think about 1200 visitors in the four, first four weeks of March. And then by the fifth week, we were up to our highest ever, which I think was like 15 or 1600. Right. Um, so but... has this affected uh, goal conversions? or just it, traffic it has and it hasn't because we have been receiving an insane number of phone calls 
as opposed to contact us on the website. So that we're not as concerned about. Like I said, like we really get too many, we get more requests than we can handle, uh, more requests than we can service. So that conversion is not necessarily the issue we're looking at. But I just want to pause for a moment and say, you're telling me that the Curious Ants SEO program is delivering you more customers than you can handle. Just to be clear. (laughs) Yes. Okay. So please continue. <laughs> it, I mean, it's true in that, uh, and also the peak of this was probably in March. Um, there were times where, so the first step we do is verify insurance benefits. And there were weeks where I was doing like 10 different benefits in a week, which is a lot. You what know? a wonderful problem. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> but it could be very well that the traffic you're losing, if it's not affecting your customers, is more like informational traffic, not necessarily converting. And so it could be something like that. that. Like sometimes when, when when I'll get started on a client, it's easy to get the traffic ramped up, Mm -hmm. but it's a lot harder to get customers ramped up. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're sort of the opposite. Yeah. yeah. In that, once we convert someone to a customer, the odds of them returning to our website are actually lower because they're getting the service from us. Right. So they don't need to read information secondhand because right. they have a, the professional in their home. Mm-hmm. So it's definitely just more informational visitors that we have taken a hit on, which so is why, case- I, yeah. It's okay to lose those visitors. Yeah. Like, obviously you don't want to, you don't want to say goodbye and you don't yeah. not care about them, but let's not um, focus on them so much that we're forlorn when mm-hmm. we're still getting a significant number of customers. Yeah. There's always going to be more tire kickers than test drives. There'll always be more test drives right. and car purchases. And so as long as the car purchases are remaining, and the number of people kicking tires is not de- affecting the car purchases. Mm-hmm. It could be that a lot of the people who are kicking tires never were going to buy buy a car, yeah. and that might be okay. And we also our newsletter we're reworking for next month because <clears throat> I think we identified that it kind of became white noise, like it was a lot of the same information every month, like mm-hmm. just sharing the same things. So. We're in the process of reworking that to really focus on only new content and then maybe include like quick links to things as opposed to just reiterating the same things over and over every month because we think people just stopped opening it or stopped really reading it because there's no new information. Right. Um, So that's another kind of like identified you know that and the linking on social media are two of like our biggest strategies right now um and posting more blogs more consistently to try to get that traffic drive back up well but again it might not be a problem right right so even if you were to create more traffic from social media if that traffic isn't necessarily going to be returning customers are you working for something just for a vanity metric of aren't we awesome we're getting a lot of traffic in reality it's the fa- the facebook visitors do a lot of advantage for you brand awareness keep mm-hmm. keeping customers in in loop right. you know there's a lot of advantages to doing but it might be okay that you're not getting that traffic if right. that's not bringing in new co- and you could be doing a lot of work that mm-hmm. isn't necessarily paying off right if if it's just traffic that you're looking for yeah I think it's, or at least the, the mentality behind it from, you know, Kara and whatnot is a boost in brand awareness via, tra- and that's represented by website traffic because we're doing this kind of secondary service line now. So we want to spark interest. We want to start getting more people looking at us. Um, but that is a good point because I mean, really, you know, no one at our company is, is super techy as far as SEO and website, you know, development and all of these different things. It's something we're kind of building from the ground up because we're a small business. And so we're 
kind of learning on the fly and handling things in-house until we get to the level where, okay, this is big enough to hire someone out to do it now, or this is, that's big enough to hire someone out to do it now, which is why like myself as an operations coordinator, I wear so many different hats because right now SEO is important but not important enough to have one person doing just that, you know, marketing is important, but not, you know, so it's a lot of things like that, that are challenging as a business grows from small to large, because we are in this sort of in between where, you know, we do a lot of business and we just opened this big clinic that was not cheap. And, you know, we're doing all of these things and it's kind of this in between where we got to grow now, like we hit a, a, a spot and now we got to keep growing, but also retain our integrity. And like, it's a wild time and it's exciting. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah. it is exciting. So make sure you spend your time efficiently and not doing things that just are, are metrics that don't pay for themselves. Right. It could be really distracting to be worried about traffic right now. In reality, you can increase that traffic. It Mm -hmm. might not help. Mm -hmm. Right. If, it, if, if you're not now, it could be that traffic down now might translate into lower leads later by a couple of months, mm-hmm. right? As people, less people were being introduced to you, blah, blah, blah. But like, I kind of, if, if the customers are still coming in, I'd almost say, great. What's the problem with less traffic? If, if we can do less effort and still get more customers, isn't that a good thing? Right. Like, and, and if it, maybe we, we need to reevaluate how we're evaluating what a customer is and how we measure the customers, but let's just be careful about putting a lot of worry and effort in something that, yeah. okay, we, we could totally turn our traffic around. It might not really help. Mm-hmm. And that's where we got to, that's why going back to the reports, looking at the bottom line is so very important. 